Our story starts in 1965 in a town of 15,000 in northwestern Louisiana. It's 6 a.m. on the first Wednesday of spring. Boom. A natural gas pipeline runs 100 meters from a row of houses, and it's just exploded. A fireball is sent 400 feet into the air. Six cars and three trucks are melted due to the heat. Five houses are leveled, their furnishings scattered across 20 acres. 17 people are killed, nine of them children. All but two of the casualties are burned beyond recognition. Those two that were identifiable were launched 60 feet from their homes. And the culprit for such a vast scale of destruction is a crack in a pipe as big as your fingernail. When stresses in the pipe steel, combined with a corrosive attack from the groundwater, these fingernail-sized cracks grow from the outer surface of the pipe. When seven or more of these cracks link up, they gain the driving force necessary to cause an explosion. This is called stress corrosion cracking, and it hadn't been seen in, in pipelines before this first explosion. What makes stress corrosion cracking so deadly to pipelines is it occurs at stresses far below what you'd expect for traditional cracks. This is due to the chemical component of the process, which both dissolves and weakens the steel along the crack front. So in the years following this explosion, a set of guidelines were created to help predict when stress corrosion cracking would occur and if it would cause an explosion. One of the key assumptions behind these guidelines is the cracks would grow approximately perpendicular to the outer wall, which they did for 40 or so years. But then in 2004 came our twist. We started to instead see stress corrosion cracking that grew at an angle, and our assumptions were no longer valid. And this raised three key questions. Why are these cracks growing at an angle? Could these cracks link up and grow faster than regular SCC? And if the guidelines are not changed, would there be another explosion? This is where I come in. My thesis is the development of a model that will tell us how, why, when, and where this new type of SCC will occur. I simulate the microstructure, or the atomic building blocks of, of the model, to help us determine which manufacturing processes will cause these inclined cracks. I'm developing an algorithm that will tell us how fast and in which direction these cracks will grow, and I simulate multiple cracks in three dimensions to help us update the interaction criteria. Overall, my work will bring more certainty to the guidelines, hopefully prevent some explosions, and save some lives. Thank you. Thank you, James. So, question from our judges. James, um, how much... There we go. James, how much involvement have you got with uh, industry in your project and, um, and where ultimately is this going to uh, make some changes for them? So I'm working um, with the Energy Pipelines CRC, uh, which is um, uh, a government-sponsored project which is linking the pipeline industry with a, a bunch of universities in Australia. So I'm working directly with um, the pipeline industry to help update the guidelines that they will be using in the field so the, read, the results of my work go straight on and will be used to help um, address these issues. We're also working with um, some companies in Canada and the United States, so there's also international ramifications. <laughs>